As you guys know, I have a Steam Deck and I have been loving it. I've been benchmarking it. We've actually got a video about that coming really soon, but there's one feature that Valve has for the Steam Deck that unfortunately isn't officially supported yet. It is on the software side, but on the hardware side, well, it doesn't exist. And that is the Steam Deck dock. Yes, currently your Steam Deck cannot switch like a Nintendo Switch, but today we're gonna fix that. We're gonna make our own dock because Valve is not ready to release theirs. The only problem is it's gonna get a little LTT in here. So what are you gonna need to actually do this yourself if you've got a Steam Deck? Well, we're gonna need only really three main components and then I'm going a little bit extra because this is greater than pie and that's what we do. So you're probably gonna wanna pick up these. These come in a two pack, they are right angle USB-C adapters. This is gonna help out with any cable strain. Most of the USB-C hubs that you can buy have a pretty stiff cable and this will help out in alleviating some stress and also we're going to need it because of the specific one we have today. You're also gonna need some sort of a stand to sort of serve as your dock. This one is actually branded for the Steam Deck. It was really affordable on Amazon, but I have a feeling that this was actually a Wii U gamepad stand that was rebranded for the Nintendo Switch and then rebranded again for the Steam Deck. Because it's wide enough for the Steam Deck, but it's very familiar in design to one that I actually had for the Wii U gamepad. So yeah, it, pretty cheap, pretty easy. In fact, I would recommend just these two alone if you're just charging your Steam Deck, because this is a great way to actually charge your Steam Deck on a stand and keep it nice and neat while it's charging. And then last but not least, you're gonna need a USB-C hub like this one. This one is convenient for a couple reasons. One, it has pass-through power, which means we can use the official Steam Deck power adapter with it. It also has a micro SD card slot and an SD card slot built in as a reader, and three USB ports along with an HDMI out. Now you might want one with uh, ethernet, which you can get. The biggest requirement is that it actually has a high enough power pass through to get to the Steam Deck. This one can do a theoretical up to a thousand watts pass through, which is great because the Steam Deck is a very power hungry device and its charger is pretty specific. So you're gonna want something like this. Optionally, you could pick up a charger that is rated to the same spec as the Steam Deck. I would wait until first party Steam Deck chargers come in because what we've learned from the Nintendo Switch is that the official power adapters can be kind of specific to each device. Now to actually put this whole thing together and the kind of jankiness that is going to be this build, I've got some Gorilla Glue epoxy and an aluminum channel that I've cut to size. Uh, yeah, this stuff is actually admittedly better than the zip ties I was originally thinking of using, but you know, we're gonna go LTT, but we might as well go nicer than most LTT projects. I'm hoping it ends up actually looking pretty good. Now, if you have a 3D printer, this would be a perfect opportunity to just make your own stand and then make some sort of a cradle for one of these. I mean, that wouldn't be too hard to do. And if I actually had one, that would be the route that I'd be taking. But instead, we're going the jank route. Okay, so my plan here, I'm just gonna take this and this, and I'm just gonna glue this together like this. So let's get these all out of the boxes. So I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I am not that experienced with this kind of epoxy. I have used the instant mix quick dry stuff from Loctite. This is the first time I've actually ever had to mix my own resin epoxy. And while it did work very well, I will say I got incredibly lucky. My ratio was definitely not perfect and a lot could have gone wrong. In fact, I could have easily messed this up. I did try to follow the instructions on the back of the package the best I could, but I did speak with Gamer Guts later who informed me that I probably should have done additional research instead of just trying to read the back of the package and going with it. For example, I shouldn't have mixed in a bowl that I intended to keep. More importantly, I probably should have been wearing a mask and gloves while doing this. It did work out, but I would like you guys to know that there are additional safety measures that you probably should follow if you are going to use this product in particular. Okay, we've been letting this sit for a little bit just to make sure that it cured properly. And I mean, that's stuck on. Oh, wow. Yes. 
That's sturdy. Okay. <laughs> well, shit, I think it worked. And this doesn't look that jank. I mean, it's, it's slightly jank, but it's not the jankiest thing I think I've ever made on this channel. As long as it docks into here. Look at it. Like, that's like kind of legit, actually. All right, so I think our next step is gonna be to actually test to make sure that it the dock works as intended. Okay guys, it's a few days later, but that's because I've had a bit of difficulty with the Steam Deck and its dock. Not because my dock is a problem, but because, well, let's just say there's a little bit of work that Val could do on the back end to make this better. And we'll explain a little bit later, but first let me actually show you it's working. So right here, I actually have my Steam Deck plugged into, this is an old 1080p monitor that I've got lying around. I've used this one on the channel a lot. Um, it's connected to the DIY dock that we created. And then I've only got an Xbox controller plugged in as an input. It works with the Steam UI just fine. And if we were to pop into, say, a game, you can see it behaves exactly like it should. But there was a bit of troubleshooting that we had to go through to get it here. You see, unfortunately, the Steam Deck doesn't quite work like a Nintendo Switch yet. Almost, but not quite. For example, right now, this display is locked to 720p. 1080p monitor. It can go higher than that. The problem is, right now, with how the Steam Deck is reacting to that screen, is it's actually disabled its screen, which I don't know if is a feature or a bug, and is treating itself as if it's this screen right here, which is okay because I wasn't planning on gaming above 720p, 1080p at most in most games with this, but it is a bit weird. And sometimes when booting it up like this, it just decides to treat it like a second monitor. As you can see though, we've got no input. It's just kind of weird, right? So we have to pop into the Steam menu go to controller settings, reorder controllers, and we have to move the Xbox controller to the top slot. This is a carryover bug from Windows, actually. We actually came across this problem when testing the Razer Huntsman Analog, where the Razer Huntsman Analog would actually take over controller one slot and prevent you from using a controller in any slot besides controller two. And this is actually my main complaint that I had in that because there were games that just didn't work well with the Huntsman that of course would work better with a controller. Unfortunately, this isn't something that's easy to diagnose unless you've already had to deal with this in the past. So hopefully this is a free little tip for you guys to take to your Steam decks. From here though, now that we've got the controller set up properly, you can see that it just works. And if you actually take a look, I actually have the metrics uh, up on the screen the same way that I do when I have it in portable mode. This is set to high at 720p. And we're still getting like 60 frames per second in this game in particular. But as you can see, at 720p and high settings, this actually looks pretty good. Which then brings me to my final point. Why hasn't Valve released their own dock yet? And I think there's two reasons. One is supply issues. They announced that on Twitter. In fact, that today a tweet went up with that. But secondly, I think that they're still trying to work out a couple bugs. For one, if a keyboard and mouse is connected, it treats it like a controller, which is only a problem in some games where the game will just completely bug out and the mouse can move as much as it wants, but it will not rotate properly like a true keyboard and mouse setup. And the only way to fix that is to go into desktop mode and to use Steam from the desktop mode. And that does work in some games, but in other games it causes issues. For example, Doom Eternal became completely unplayable in desktop mode because it kept defaulting to a controller that didn't exist. And without the gaming mode overlay to allow us to switch controllers, it, it became a weird problem. 
especially for a game that I thought would champion this mode very well since the game runs on Ultra Nightmare already. Additionally, because currently it's running at 720p, it's actually easier to run than Steam Deck native, which means you can crank the fidelity a little bit. In Cyberpunk 2077, I completely disabled FSR and the game still ran and it looks okay. But that's about as far as you're going to be able to get with the graphics on this thing. Ideally, I think that the Steam Deck is actually best served in a household where there's a PC and the Steam Deck, as opposed to the Nintendo Switch, which kind of served a bridged console, the handheld experience. The Steam Deck isn't necessarily going to sell on the same gimmick. Yes, you can plug your Steam Deck into a TV. Yes, you can plug your Steam Deck into a monitor. But you might not really want to. For example, in my current setup, I have a pretty decent gaming PC that can crank out 144 frames, max fidelity at 1440p, or I can plug my Steam Deck into a dock, play at 720p, medium to low settings most games, and 60 frames per second if I'm lucky. But there is a situation where the dock makes a lot of sense. I am about to go on a road trip, the first one since I got the Steam Deck. And depending on the situation of this road trip, I may set the dock up so that I can actually play on a TV. And I can't necessarily lug my PC around, so it makes a lot of sense to do it this way. Another situation that it might make sense is to have it in my living room where I don't actually have a dedicated PC anymore. From there, I can actually have the Steam Deck running, but I am a little opposed to doing so because the TV is a 1080p TV that's actually fairly decent in size. Granted, I do think that I probably should explore 1080p with low settings versus 720p with high settings. I actually really don't know which would be better, especially because Spyro Week 9 Trilogy looks really good with its high settings. I've got a bit to ponder about this. But in the end, did our dock work? Yes. Can you make it? Yes, it only cost us this much to make it. And I have already left links down in the description for these items. Presumably as long as they're still in stock and shipping, you can go ahead and buy them. And if you wanna buy an additional charger, iFixit will we'll be carrying them soon. I've actually added myself to the um, wait list so that once more chargers become available, I will be buying another one so that I can have two chargers instead of one. But that's where we're gonna end today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, leave it a like, comment, subscribe. I'm gonna continue to cover the Steam Deck. I've got a review coming with docked and undocked performance and we've got that other video. And I also have another one that's in the works that's really out of left field for us, but I'm kind of tentatively excited about it because I got it working. Let's just say, I got Skyrim working with mods and not just like a couple mods. I got like 50 mods working and I'm adding more as we speak. That video will be dropping at some point soon. So if you're not subscribed, I would get subscribed. Thank you guys again, Wolfie.